Okay, well, in the middle of January, I was invited to be the guest of honour at the Wrexham Road Club's annual prize-giving dinner. So, I, should, I turned up on my bike, as I would turn up anywhere on my bike, and I was totally gobsmacked when there were 72 people in the hall for this presentation, there was only another bloke on a bike. Wow. So I was I was asked to be to uh, just give a recital, uh, a recital of how I've accumulated six hundred and fifty thousand miles in my lifetime. How many? This is cycling miles. Six hundred fifty thousand. That was end of last middle of December. Wow. I've just come up to six hundred and fifty-two thousand miles now. And you documented all the miles. That was all written down. Yeah. Okay. So I was asked to give a talk, a little bit after dinner speaker, which I've never been asked to anything like this before. And uh, so I spent five or ten minutes just yapping about how I've accumulated all these miles with my wife as well. She's been a keen cyclist all her life and we've been everywhere. We've cycled right round the coast of the British Isles, almost. We haven't been to Dover, that's the only major place we haven't been to. Uh, we both cycled in every county in the British Isles uh, by the time we were both 55. Now between us we have cycled in excess of a million miles and we've never bought any petrol. Never wow. ever. That's our claim to fame, we never bought any petrol. And what sort of accommodation do you use when you're doing all these miles? Well, we, we've, we've bed and breakfasted all over the British Isles, we've camped all over the British Isles, and we've spent around about 620 nights in youth hostels all over the British Isles. Yeah. We've, I've got a map of Scotland, a 1970 Bartholomew's map of Scotland, which every route I've pedalled on... Is that a half-inch one? It's, uh, no, it's not as big as that. No, it's only a... Half inch of the mile. Yeah, no, 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 no. But I've got every route that I've, what we've pedalled on, yeah. pencilled in on this map. Yeah. And my only regret is that uh, I didn't do the same for England and Wales. Okay. Because... Uh, now, right now, those two characters there... On the, the tandem, yeah? The bloke at the back is blind. Okay. Now, they've got a... They've got a... a not Tony Joel. Tony, Liverpool builder, frame builder, well-known frame builder. They've got his first aluminium frame. Yeah, I think he, I know what he you ever mean, made. Yeah. Terry Dolan. Teddy Dolan. Teddy Dolan. Teddy Dolan. And they're amazing. They're up here regularly. Yeah. And when they come to these pinch gates, they can't get through because they've got flat bars. Yeah, they're locked. So they both hop off, and with it being a very light machine, they just lift it over just the pinch bars. Yeah. Up, yeah. But when they yeah. come to the other barriers, yeah. they get round without. An amazing yeah, couple, they're out sure. every day and the tap on the back is totally blind. Yeah. That's a little uh, out of the, aside from my speech at the uh, okay. at the Wrexham Road yeah, Club. Yeah. And yeah. So uh, we've also we've been on sixty Scottish islands. How many? Sixty. Sixty Scottish mm, yeah. islands. And we spent we spent our 40th wedding anniversary on the Shetlands Islands camping. <laughs> what year was that? Oh, this was about 15, yeah, 15 years ago, whatever that was. And you bothered by the midges when you go up there? They weren't, didn't bother them in Shetlands, no. Okay. No, they were right, there was a wind blowing up there. Is that where Paul, Paul Tiny He's lives? on the Orkneys. He's on the That's Orkneys. That's another story, then. Okay. So there we are on the Shetlands, uh, camping and alternately bed and breakfasting yeah. and uh, it's an overnight boat cruise you see from Aberdeen to Lerwick yeah. so there we are we turned up at Aberdeen and a scorching hot day the, the heat was unbelievable my feet were burning walking on the tarmac to the boat <laughs> and it was unbelievably hot and the boat leaves at six o'clock and it gets in at Lerwick at eight o'clock and we got off the boat at Lerwick and we nearly froze to death. We, both of us in our summer gear. That's amazing. And it was freezing, God, bloody cold. So what caused that? What caused the difference in the temperature? Well, you it's 500 miles there to the North Pole, aren't you, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So we thought, well, the first night we'll do a bed and breakfast. So we pedalled about 40 miles this day, freezing to death with our summer gear on. And, um, we got to this bed and breakfast, and lo and behold, the bloke, the 
the, the Shetland Islands are full of people from Merseyside who've gone up there for the oil money. Right? OK, yeah. And this bloke we stayed with, he went to the same school as me in Morton. Wow. About 20 years after yeah. me. You know, okay. he's lived in Morton with it. Yeah. Like. So we put our tent up on the most northernest part of the Shetlands we could. Spent a couple of nights there. And then coming back a few days later, we did about 12 different islands in the Shetlands. You know, we camped and we bed and breakfast yeah. there. So and you moved from island to island by little ferries? Oh yes, marvellous ferries. The ferries are cheap. They're like are cheap. the pedestrians, oh, yes. the car ferries. No, okay. and the ferries are cheap, you know, it's amazing. So well, there we are this particular day, we were flogging up this damn big hill, lashing down with rain, the wind was howling, and uh, my missus said to me, well, most blokes take their wives on a cruise for their 40th wedding, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they'll be quiet, woman. I said, you had your cruise last week coming from Aberdeen to the way, and you're getting another one next week going back. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Then. Well, <clears throat> going back to my, uh, are we on, well, know, going yeah. back to my uh, experiences, which I recited at this dinner, I could fill a small book on the horrifying and interesting and <laughs> terrifying experience we've had cycle camping. Have you thought about writing or getting someone to write a book for you? Somebody's told me, people have said to me for many years, why don't you write a book? And I said, well, I've got to learn to write first. Sure. You say, because I've got 82, I'm not going <laughs> to... No, but you can get what they had it. You can get what you call a ghostwriter oh, yeah. to do it for That's you. Right, yeah. And all they do, you use a microphone, yeah. and you tell all your stories, yeah. and they just write it for you. Yeah. No, yeah. Se I'm serious. Yeah, Simon Flood's, Simon Flood's mother around every time I see her. <laughs> well, you write this blooming book. Holy. No, you need to. Oh. Honestly, you need to. All these experiences you've had, yeah. <clears throat> like, when you, when you think about it, this movie I'm doing now, mm. uh, it, you're so interesting and so easy to interview, aren't you? Yeah. No, I could go on, I could go on for hours about my lifetime experiences. I say, fortunately, I've got a wife who experienced these <coughs> things with me. So t tell me, tell me now what your name is, your wife's name, roughly what year you were born, well, and uh, where you were born. Well, I, I was born in Birkenhead, but I keep quiet about that. Okay. <coughs> born in Birkenhead in 1928. And your name is? That is a bike. Surname? Watson. Watson, okay. I've been known as Harry the Bike for the last and 45 this, and this years. this cycling group that you lead is called... Watson's what? Wanderers. Watson's right, Wanderers. All right, all right, Tom. Don the Barber. Don the Barber, yeah. He cuts my hair every two months or so. Yeah, he lives in, he lives in Shotton, doesn't he? Oh, he does, yeah. Yeah. So, and his, his wife used to make the cycling clothes, didn't she? That's right, yeah, but she died. He got, he got mad at it again just it before Christmas. Elite. Yeah. Lead cycle wear, wasn't it? Yes, he got married for the second time. He went to Australia to get married. I didn't know that. Yeah, just just uh, last autumn, yeah. And Celia, where where was Celia? She was born in Runcorn in 1926. Which part of Runcorn? Oh, she. The was... reason I asked, my father lived in Runcorn. Yeah, she was. Her house would have been directly underneath the uh, flyover for the Coatanga Bridge. Okay. Got pulled down when they built the bridge, apparently. Okay. Yeah. So that's very, very close to the transporter bridge. Oh, that's right, yeah. Well, we used okay. to use that, yeah, did not we? That's the bottom of Greenway Road. You remember the transporter? Of course, I used yeah. to go on it, yeah. Used, yeah. I'm not old, you know. No. I am not old. Well, Celia, well, I said they lived, lived by the transporter, and the two brothers used to hang on to underneath the carriageway as you went across and drop off into the canal and swim with Nobody heard that one before. So I'm told, yeah. Nobody heard that. No, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, man. hang on they drop off in the canal and swim with And nobody knew they did that? Like, <laughs> no, I'll tell you, sir. And, and they drop down into the Manchester ship canal, yeah. and stuff like that? come out, yeah. Yeah, yeah we used to use it on a Sunday uh, transporter bridge. And do you remember when the transporter bridge, mm, you missed the one, the bridge, and you used to walk up onto the railway line. Oh, yeah, we did that. Like this one where we're sitting now by Harden Bridge. We did, yeah. I did that in 1961 with my brother-in-law, who'd just come back from Australia. He'd been living in Australia for five years. And I took him out on the tandem. And I know it was 1961 because the Coast Hanger Bridge yeah. was not quite joined together. There was about three inches, six inches gap. Yeah, sure, and yeah. they were joining it together the next yeah. day. Yeah. So this was seen, uh, but of course that bridge is gone now. Yeah long since gone.
So me and my missus, we've been on the Transporter Bridge at Runcombe. We've travelled on the Transporter Bridge in Middlesbrough. Yeah. And quite recently, we travelled on the Newport South Wales Transporter Bridge. Oh, I haven't been on them yet. Yeah, no, that, that was closed for years. We were going okay. to put it down and ship it to America. Yeah. But it got re weakened. Yeah, we were on this one Easter weekend. Yeah. We had a weekend down there. But there's one Transporter Bridge I haven't been on because I can't get to it, and that belongs to Unilever, Warrington. In Warrington? Yeah, did you know that? By Bank Key? Yeah. Okay. They have a Transporter Bridge, which is not used, but it's a, it's a listed building yeah. for getting the wagon to cross the Mersey. Okay. It's long, long since been out yeah. of action, but it's, uh, it's a listed building. Yeah, in Warrington here, do you remember the other side of Warrington? Do you remember the. Have you ever been on the little rowing boat? With your bike, you know the other side of uh... well, across the across the canal. Yeah. No. You haven't been on that with your bike. No, no. Yeah. I don't know if it's no. still still being used. Oh, I'm not too sure. So. <laughs> I lived in Warrington for 21 years yeah, before yeah. I moved to Bevington. Yeah. 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 So no, we used to we, use that ferry. Pretty we much. we go up the ship canal on the Mersey cruise every year. That's marvellous day. Yeah, I've never been on that. Oh, yeah. it's superb. Woodside, well, from we yeah, from Woodside yeah. up to Shelford Keys and back. Get a I, had, bus back. I had a house built in 1972. Uh, I lived in Liverpool at the time, and when they were pulling the old houses down in Liverpool off Kensington, there, you know, where I rented one, mm. I bought a house in Penketh. Oh, yeah. You know, by the Ferry Inn. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I lived, just off Station Road there, you know, by the Ferry Inn in Penketh. Fiddler's Ferry Inn. The Fiddler's Ferry Inn. Oh, yeah, we passed that. Yeah, that's where I used to live, on that road there. I passed it last week, and we, last Sunday, I was past the Fiddler's sure. Ferry Inn, yeah. 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 <laughs> The week last Sunday, but that's been flooded many, many times. Oh, you know. sure, yeah. The week last Sunday, I go out with the mould section once a year because I can't handle hills in my old age. Okay. So I get invited out when they go down Runcorn, Newtown. Yeah. And we had dinner at uh, Norton Priory. Yeah. And we whizzed over the bridge of Moor over the river and whatever. Yeah. And uh, we came down the St Helens Canal and we went into a cafe cum museum on Spike Island, which I didn't know existed before. Mm, I didn't either. Yeah, coffee and it's all new. Yeah. Coffee and tea and uh, that right, yeah, Spike yeah. Island, yeah. Have you have you been to the Cycle Museum no, in the Walton. old coaching house in Walton Old Gardens yet? Walton, no. Walton Old Gardens. No, I've heard about yeah, it. Yeah, no. you know where that is? Yeah, not been By the there. crematorium. Yeah, no, I've been yeah. there. It's really good. Yeah, I'm sure. He's got lots of old bikes in there yeah. he's a really nice guy, you know. Yeah. He's my bike will probably finish up there when I <laughs> they get disposed of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you so go. What, what what plans have you got for this year? This is year is well, 2009. What what plans have you got for 2009? Well, don't make any plan. I could be wife snackered. Okay. <coughs> she's in a wheelchair. She's in a wheelchair <coughs> yeah. now. Even though she was on the tandem with you last week. Yeah, if we go anywhere without the tandem, it's quicker to get her in a wheelchair and push no, her. I understand. Out. I understand yeah. We have a train ride every Friday. This Friday we're going to Coventry meet my brother-in-law. You're going to. Coventry by train. We go on a train every year. Uh, my brother in law lives there. Okay. My yeah. sister died last Easter, but we're going to baby special oh, my brother in law. We have a pub club and yeah. down the train. Last yeah. Friday we got the train to Bangor and uh, I pushed the 10 miles around Anglesey and around Anglesey for dinner. Right. And, and Tell me so. where you used to work. Well, I used to work at. You were a fitter? Uh, I was a fitter, busy nuclear fuels. In Cape and Airst? Yes, that's right, yeah. Okay. And what year did you start there and what year did you finish? I was there 20 years. 20 years? Finishing yeah. uh, finish in 89, been totally retired 20 years. Yeah. So. yeah. What sort of tents do you use when you go camping? Oh, well, there's the thing now, I haven't done any camping for two two years. Yeah. And all my tents are waiting to be somebody to come along. There's 100% discount anybody who wants a couple of Van Gogh, oh. Van Gogh Force 10 Mark 3 tents Amazing. in good condition. Amazing. I've got two tents, two sleeping bags, a couple of inflatable mattresses, yep, primer right. stove, pots and pans, yep. and nobody wants it because it's 30 years old. <laughs> can't, get, can't get rid of it. But they're still in good condition, aren't they? Oh, excellent All condition, the seams, yeah. the seams on the tents don't leak, do they? Oh, they've no, all been no. sealed off. Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time you went with the Rubstuff Fellowship? Go every Easter. We're going this Easter to Hawes in Yorkshire. Going to Hawes? Yeah, but we're in the wheelchair this year. Yeah, I was going to say, Hawes, there's too many hills around in Hawes. Yeah, oh yeah, we can't get the tandem on the train to get there yeah. anyway. And I always look forward to the Easter meet. Yeah. So I was just, just on my way to the station to buy a certificate, buy advance 
tickets, you know, get them cheaper. Yeah. Have you ever met a, an old friend of mine called John Redmond from Warrington? Big tall guy, about six foot four. Can't recall the name now. I can't remember. Remember, he's as good as it used to be. Yeah, he's in the Rough Stuff Fellowship, yeah. Oh, I would know He him was a welder. Him. He used to make canal boats and things like oh, that, yeah, you know, yeah, narrow I would, boats. I would probably yeah. know him. Yeah, very quiet guy. Yeah. Yeah, lives, lives in Warrington. Because the Rough Stuff Fellowship's good, because there'll be about 70 of us yeah. congregate there for the weekend. Yeah. And, uh, and what month do you go? Do you have a, an annual date? The same? Every Easter. Every Easter. Well, when okay. Easter meet, it's a different venue yeah. each, each Easter. Have you ever experienced lots of snow at Easter? Oh, many, many times. Oh, yeah, and that Easter. doesn't stop you? No, no. Well, you book in, you, you book in for your annual dinner okay. and, wait, you know, the AGM. It's the only AGM yeah. I go to because you've got a captive audience. It's everybody sure. goes to the AGM because we're all there. Yeah. Would you say that there was somebody similar to yourself that's never, ever bothered with motor cars? Not like car assist Yeah, there's a, bloke, there's a bloke named Eric Neal. He, he got a letter in this month's journal, which came a couple of days ago. In the Rough Stuff Fellowship rough Journal. Stuff, and he's a polyol. He can't get to Easter meet this year. OK. Because he's got, he's got a wife who's not very good at walking. Yeah. And they have a dog. Yeah. And they always turn up on the Easter meet. Yeah. But uh, and he, he has a thing about the trains. You know, he's not, trains aren't very... Happy with he has a thing about not being able to get your bikes on trains, and he, he has a dog. And very yeah. often the railways don't want dogs on their trains. Man. So he apologised. He won't be coming to the Easter Beat this year because it's a okay. six mile. It's a six mile for me. It's a six mile walk from from uh, the highest railway station in England, Garsdale Head. Okay. I've got a six mile walk on the main road. Okay. <laughs> Let's get a bus, of course. Yeah, yeah, you might be able to, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Because you can use your bus pass now, can't you? Then? Don't have yeah. a bus pass, we have a train pass. We can't. So you're in Wales then, OK. <coughs> we get, we yeah. get a free rail pass, free okay. rail card yeah. off the council. OK. Which saves us £48 a year. Yeah. Because I normally do about 4,000 miles a year on trains. Yeah, OK. We train all over the British Isles. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. with us living on Merseyside, we can use Mersey Rail on our pass. Oh, that's right, yeah. And we can use any bus all over England on our pass as well. Free you charge. can't use any train out of no, no, Merseyside. No, no, definitely not, no. no. We can't have both. No. And uh, Celia very often goes into town on, on a bus, but she has to pay. She moans about the price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, so... So what are, what other things would you like to do? Can you think of anything that you would like to do no, apart done, from the, we've done the it Rough all. Fellowship meeting? We've done it all. I mean, do you ever go on the CTC birthday rides? Oh, years ago, yeah. You don't go on them anymore? No, no. OK. That was you, Celia, you got osteoporosis. OK. And uh, she's been bad for th three years now. Yeah. And we had to pack what, up. What year was it when she had this serious accident? Oh, it was 89, February 89. 20 years just now she was in Walton Hospital. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. But Didn't it made... happen not far from Ainsley Racecourse? Yes, just outside. She was hit by a truck. Oh, obviously. yeah, truck is, yeah. Just outside. Uh, yeah. And you've been on a weekend, you're on your way home. Yeah, we've weekend. been to. Um, been to, where else? It's Chipping, somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, Frank Chipping, yeah. Weekend, yeah. yeah. Over towards Slayer, yeah, something in, like that. Yeah, she was in uh, Walton for three months. Yeah, I don't remember. But she made a remarkable recovery after that, you know. She, yeah, yeah. A couple of years, she was doing 8,000 miles a year once she got back yeah. on the bike line. Yeah. But those days, oh, when, you, when you get old, you just have to live on your memories because you can't do what you used to do. Well, I remember yeah. meeting your wife a few years ago. Barb and I were on, sort of like on the outskirts of Blaken. Mm. And she was, I think she was just coming off the cycle path or going onto the cycle path, and she's just been for a new a birthday cake for you. Oh, yeah. It was a special <laughs> celebration. She's oh, just been for the birthday cake that's for, right, yeah. Yeah, for Harry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. amazing. It's funny, we, we, we were in a pub yesterday called The Gate at Winsford. Yeah. I said that as we've been here before, but, uh, leading these Watson's Wanderers rides every Tuesday, which they have done for the last 18 years. And where do they meet? We meet at Christleton by the Plough Inn, the crossroads, plough, okay. every Tuesday, sure. 10 o'clock. Yeah. And in the last 18 years since I've been leading these rides, I've led over 700 rides. 18 years you've yeah. been doing that? 
and uh, I visited, I make a point of visiting a different pub every Tuesday. Amazing. And in the last 18 years, I've taken my gang to 532 different pubs. Wow! You see? And have you kept a record of all oh, the, yes, the all names of all so, the pubs? Oh yes, all written down, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an archivist. Okay. So yesterday, we've been to this pub before. We celebrated one of my birthdays here a few years back. When I looked at my archives, I swore it was 93. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were there celebrating my birthday. Now tell me the story about the surprise visit to the Guinness factory at Preston Brook. Oh yeah, well, that come about, uh, I clocked up half a million miles, you see. This was uh, January 97. I clocked up my first half million miles. There's no way I'm going to get a second half million miles. But that's another yeah, story. Yeah. And uh, so I, uh, what we do is, it was on, uh, yeah, New Year's Day at the Bull Inn at Chocolate, which was all local at the time. Yeah. We went there, and uh, people presented me with Guinness glasses and Guinness this, that, and the other like, and all sorts of things made a bit of a fuss of me. Yeah. And uh, my photograph was taken underneath a big banner. The lads had produced this whoppy big banner. Yeah. You know, congratulations, Harry the bike, half a million miles, that's 280 miles to the gallon. Because <laughs> at that time, I say a lot younger, I was doing 280 miles at least a week. Yeah, yeah. And I was drinking a gallon of Guinness a week. Yeah. You see, in those days. Yeah. So I was made a big fuss of. So a bit later on in the year, I put a do on the Cape Nurse Social Club for all my gang, you know, the 50, 500 miles, 500,000 miles, I should invite 50 people wow. to this club too. So I put a big deal on, everybody ate well and drank well. Yeah. And, uh, and then a bit later on, uh, one of the chaps in the club, he'd met somebody walking who happened to be the, a manager at the Preston Brew Guinness factory. So that was just a coincidence they met this guy? Yeah, this guy's a walker. And uh, he met this other bloke who was a, was a manager. He had a chat and a meal in a pub, apparently. <laughs> so, unbeknown to me, there was a do organised at the Guinness factory, you see. Preston Brook, yeah. So I turned up this Tuesday. I was told to get on the back and mind my own blooming business. Yeah. And we did the devious route and finished up at the Guinness factory. Yeah. Where we all had to sign in. There was about 18 of us turned up for this do. 18? Yeah. We have, a, we have a dozen now most Tuesdays, we have a good turn out in the summer, we can get up And to. nobody actually let the cats out of the bag, you just no, didn't know uh, where you were going. I haven't got a clue where we're going until we finish up in this Guinness factory. Isn't it? Fantastic. So we go into, this, uh, into the, uh, this little reception room and uh, this manager was there, plus the boss of the factory and also I think it was a Mr Richard Guinness, the only surviving member of the family that was uh, yeah. in the business on. Okay. So we had a bit of a talk, and they said, unfortunately, we, we can't give you a drink because we're not a licensed site. Okay. But uh, we'll give you a tour of the factory. Yeah. So we all put white coats on. Yeah. And we all put... Did you have to wear hair nets as well? Oh, yeah. We all dressed up in the gear. We had okay. to have microphones and earplugs in and things. Yeah, yeah. And this site manager took us on an hour's tour of the factory. Fantastic. And it was unbelievable. I just forget the number, there's thousands of tins of Guinness being packed and they all get on the conveyor belt upside down so yeah. they don't leak. Okay. And uh, and there's a there's a boat comes in, or it did do, came in from Dublin every night to docks in Liverpool. Yeah. And there was a fleet of tankers delivered this raw yeah. undiluted Guinness okay. through Preston Brook. Yeah. And the reason why the factory was there because it's on the Vernley Aqueduct. Okay. That's why the factory was built there. It's got sure. pure Welsh water to dilute the yeah the Royal Guinness down. So it was the right sort of like what they call the pH value of the water. And no, that's like right. That. Yeah. So we yeah. had a, we had this hours talk around the uh, walk around the factory. Not a soul in sight. Yeah. And not just Guinness. They packaged all sorts of other yeah. stuff as well. And so did they actually have a bottling plant or is it just cans? It's all cans. Okay. Yes, all we could see was cans, conveyor okay. after conveyor belt of cans sure. of Guinness, lager. All aluminium cans. Yeah, all sorts of other rubbish okay. as well. Yeah. So after an hour, I don't know, after an hour of tramping round, we goes back to the uh, this uh, reception room. Yeah. 
And the shock of my life, there was a big table lined one side of the room, lined up with food. Wow. And the other table, the other side, there was piled out with cans of Guinness, you see. Help yourself. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I was made a fuss of. I was given a Guinness silk tie, which I've still got. Yeah. Never gets used, of course. Yeah. I was given a Guinness proper shirt, I was jersey, you know. The, yeah. I gave it all sorts of Guinness. All the club was given something, key rings and pens and Great. all sorts. All the memorabilia. But I was the star of the show. They had a photographer come in from Bromborough. Yeah. Official photographer, and he uh, photographed us all, which I've got these yeah. beautiful pictures at home, much Fantastic. better than any amateur could have, of course, yeah. could have done, and that was, and that was that. Lovely. Yeah, that was half a million miles. Wow. And since then, I've done. I bet you never slept that night, did you? <laughs> yeah. I bet you. I bet you were so yeah. excited. Yeah, and then about a week later, knock up the door. I opened the front door and there's a bloke there standing with a tray with 24 cans of Guinness in for more me. More and more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, unbelievable that, but it wouldn't happen now because this bloke, the manager, he, okay. he went on to other things and mm. this, this is a one off. Of course, yeah. 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 And this all started off because after me oh, half million miles do at the Bull and Shock Latch, yeah. uh, one of the lads rose off to Guinness in yeah. Park Lane in London. Yeah. Telling her about this guy who cycled all this miles, all this, drank all this bloody Guinness and that. <laughs> and he got no reply, you know. A big promotion, wasn't it? Yeah, so uh, a couple of the lads, you know, wrote off, somebody wrote off to Dublin and they weren't interested. It was just pure sheer luck yeah. that one we made met this manager, you yeah. know, and, I was, and he was astounded that. Yeah. Uh, this marvellous, you know, yeah. promotion of Guinness and nobody's interested. Yeah. That's why I was organising the, of course, the yeah. Guinness factory for me. Yeah, my mother had a similar episode. She was over to have, you know what they call fishermen's friends? Oh, yeah. Those little tablets. Yeah, I've got them at home, yeah. Well, she used to live on them. My mum used to live on them. Yeah, marvellous things. And she wrote a letter to the company and she got lots of free samples for trying to promote them. Because every time she met somebody, she'd open this little box yeah. and give people fishermen's friends. Oh, yes, I like them. <laughs> yeah, <Marvelous okay>. things. <laughs> yeah, so you've already been converted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Did you ever have any children? Oh, yeah, I've got one son. He cycled. He's 52. Yeah, what's his name? Colin. Colin, Colin Watson. And where does he live? He lives Chester. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, he's a mountain biker. Goes out every Thursday night, all the year round, yeah. on rough trails. He's does he got... drive a motor car? He has a company car. He, has he a works company for Union Leavers. In fact, he just got pinched last week. His company car outside the house. Did he? Last week, yeah. yeah. He works for Union Leaver. What about? What? The Union Leaver office, is it? In uh, Sunrise. Yeah, where I live. I live. I live right by there. Yes, he's uh, he's a computer expert. Oh, he's on computers. Okay. He's uh, he's a qualified electrical engineer. He got a degree okay. in engineering, okay. but he's never been in engineering for years in computers. Okay. Yeah. He shows it out this Millennium bug in 2000. He's travelled he? all over Europe with yeah. his team, sorting that out. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah. He said he's got a company car, he's got a well paid job. He's hoped to retire at 55 and okay. just devote his time to cycling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can hear the train yeah. going past now. It must be 4 o'clock now. We've yeah. been here at Chimwagon for an hour. Sure, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll switch this off now, eh? Okay.